establish that God is a speaking God. Amen. Is anybody glad that God is a speaking God and that he is not mute? He's not silent. He's not disengaged. He is, he is very much aware of what's going on in the world. He's very much aware of what's going on in your world. And he wants to engage with you. He wants to speak with you. He wants to have a personal, real-life relationship with you. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that he speaks. Because there have been times in my life, and there are still times in my life, when, when what I need to hear, people not tell me. Sometimes there are times in your life where what you need to hear, other people cannot tell you. In other words, you need, you need a word from heaven. There are times in our lives when we have to make a big decision. We need to hear from God when we have a big decision to make. Maybe there are times when your inner world is just filled with confusion and chaos on the inside. And, and you need to hear God's word to you. You need to experience his peace. You need to experience some order. Or maybe there's times that, that you've gone through or you're going through now where it's just craziness in your relationships, in your marriage, in your family life, in your, in your singleness, in your health. Whatever the situation is, you may be there right now where you need to hear a clear word from God. Or maybe you need to know your next step. Living out your purpose or you're living out your destiny. Maybe you need to know, where is it, God, that you want me to plant my roots? I need a home church. And maybe your ears are listening today. Well, I need God to speak to me in that, in that uh, decision. Or maybe you just feel stuck in your relationship with God. Or maybe you just feel frustrated in your own spiritual growth. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are some times what we need to hear People cannot tell us, and because we are living in the end times, it is, it is more important than ever that we are discerning people and that we know the authentic voice of God. Amen? <clears throat> the, the series that we've been doing for the last six weeks basically is communicating this. God is a God who speaks. He still speaks to his people today. He speaks in many different ways. He speaks in his time and according to his wisdom. Amen. He always speaks in alignment with the word of God, the Bible, and he always speaks in alignment with his character. He's always going to speak with our best interest in mind, even if it's a truth that is hard for us to hear and hard for us to swallow. He's always going to speak in love. He's always going to speak with that gentleness. He's always going to speak with your growth and your joy and your, and your eternal salvation in mind. And so the big question that we've been wrestling with is this. Are we listening? Are we listening to God's voice? Or are we busy with other things? Are we distracted with other things? Or are we actually taking the time to pay attention and to ask ourselves, Lord, <clears throat> Would you speak to me? When was the last time that you can honestly say you heard the voice of God? I want you to think about that. Because the question is, are we listening? Amen? One of the verses I want to encourage you with is this. John 10, chapter 27. Look at it with me in your notes if you're following along. Or it's up on the screen too. Jesus said this. He said, my sheep listen. Everybody say listen. listen. Okay. That's, that's something that you and I are responsible to do, right? Our, my sheep listen to what? To my voice. He says, I know them, and they follow me. Everybody say follow. Okay, so there's two parts. There's two um, things that we are responsible for. One is listening. Okay, so once we hear, then what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to follow, right? We are, we are his sheep. He is our shepherd. We listen. With our, ear, with our spiritual ears in the ways that we've been talking about in this series. But then we need to take action. We need to take an action step and actually follow, actually do what he says to do. Actually say what he's saying to say. Actually take some action steps and follow through what we've been hearing 
with our ears. Do you see that? So today we're going to finish up the series, and I just want to talk to you about another way that God speaks to his people, and that is through promptings, the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Would you say that with me? Promptings of the Holy Spirit. Say it like you mean it. Promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Maybe you're very young in your faith. Maybe you just started your journey walking with God. Or maybe you're here today and you're, you're, you're well seasoned in walking with God. And you know the promptings of the Holy Spirit. But wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I just want you to lean in for a few minutes and just listen. Because God may be speaking something to you today through the prompting of His Holy Spirit. What is a prompting? What are promptings? Promptings are, are this, is, this is probably an a, a incomplete way to explain it, but, but let, me, let me try. Promptings are a feeling or a thought or a sense or, a, or a, just a knowing from God that can show up anytime, anywhere, maybe in the middle of a conversation, maybe in the middle of the night, while you're sleeping, maybe in the maybe driving down the road, maybe standing in the shower, maybe in the middle of worship or prayer, God speaks to us by prompting us something on the inside that we know that God is trying to say to us. <clears throat> when people experience a prompting from God, you'll generally hear them say things like, I felt like God wanted me to go and do something, okay? If, that, if somebody's experienced that, that's what they'll say. And it'll, they'll say something like, I felt, I just had this sense that I needed to give this to somebody. I just knew that I knew on the inside. I can't really explain it. I just knew that I knew that God was telling me to do this. This is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Or I felt like God wanted me to take action and help that person in need. This is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. It's a sense. It's a feeling. It's a knowing. It's a nudge. That's why I, one of the ways I like to describe it. It's a nudge from God to do something, to say something in particular. And it's something, here's how you know it's, here's how, one way that you know it's God. It doesn't go away. <laughs> He keeps speaking it. He keeps prompting it until you do what? Until you follow. Remember? You listen and you follow. And the point of the prompting is obedience. The point of the prompting is obedience. <clears throat> so there's a story in the scripture that's uh, perfect for us to learn from today. It's in the book of 1 Samuel. It involves two, two people. So if you have your notes, go ahead and follow along with me. But there's one guy who's named Eli. Everybody say Eli. He's the prophet of the nation. Think of him as the spiritual leader, the spiritual spokesman, the, the, the pastor for the people. And the other person in the story is a, is a young person, a kid, a boy. His name is Samuel. Everybody say Samuel. Okay. The, the reason Samuel is in this story is because his mom, Hannah, literally gave him to God by giving him to Eli to live and serve at the temple. You can read all this story in 1 Samuel. But the short version of the story is that Hannah was unable to have children, and she prayed to God that if, if he would give her a child, she would dedicate that child to the Lord. And not, not, just, not just on a Sunday morning prayer dedication like we're going to do next Sunday, to, for our kids, but this is a literal, lifelong dedication that she made to her son. So on his first birthday, she moved into the temple. She, she moved him into the temple to live with Eli. And no one knew it at the time, but God was up to something much bigger than just giving Samuel a place to stay. God had a calling for Samuel. God had a purpose and a destiny for Samuel. And Samuel's about to experience the voice of God for the very first time. So let's, let's read it together. It's 1 Samuel chapter 3. We'll start in verse 1. 
It says this, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. So you get this? Samuel is in a place He's in a resting place. He's in a calm place. Sometimes you and I, in order to hear the word of the Lord, we need to lay down, so to speak. We need to lay down and rest from all of our doings and all of our stress and all of our pressures. We need to lay down and listen in quietness and in stillness. So he laid, there, he laid down there in the house of the Lord, and the ark of God was there. That means the presence of God was there where he was. Then, let's keep reading. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli. Okay, He didn't realize this was the Lord speaking. He thought, It was his mentor, Eli. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called. Aren't you you glad that the Lord repeats himself? There are many times in our lives when we, we not only need to hear it the first time, but we don't, we don't recognize it. And so the Lord is gracious, and he's wonderful, and he's patient with us, and he repeats himself to us. So he went, so he went and he laid down again. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. My son... Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now, listen listen to this. Underline this if you're taking notes with me. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And a third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up, and he went to Eli, and he said, here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized what's really happening here. Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. All right, I want you to say those words after me, okay? Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This is good advice from Eli, the mentor here. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel. Samuel, then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. I think there's some truth in this passage of scripture that we just need to understand in order to be that people who listen to the voice of God, to be those people who not only listen, but follow the voice of God. Of our shepherd. If you're following with me, write this, write this down. This is point number one. You can be doing all the right things and still not know God. <clears throat> you can still be, you can be doing all the religious things that the pastor tells you to do, right? You can go to the growth track, you can give in the offering, you can serve, you can attend church, you can join a life group, and you can still not know God. 
You can be doing all the right things, and you could even be, you could have a church, a stellar church attendance. You could have perfect attendance at church and still not know God. You guys still following with me? Okay. <clears throat> this doesn't apply to anybody here, so. In verse 10, it, it tells us, now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him yet. So Samuel was worshiping God. He was, in the, he was living in the temple. He was in the right place. He was ministering before the Lord with Eli. He was doing all the right things, helping out with all the priestly duties of the day. And he was doing all of that without a knowledge of God. Now, this is a strong word for many of us churchgoers, right? Because we can get into the place and we can be tempted to start being a little self-righteous, like we've got it all together and everybody else doesn't. No, 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 no. We can be doing all the right things and we can be in the right places and we can still be missing the mark. We can still be not having a knowledge, a true knowledge of God. I like what Joyce Meyer says uh, sometimes. She says, just because you go to church, it doesn't mean you're a Christian. <clears throat> she said, I can, I can go and sit in the garage all day and it doesn't make me a car. <laughs> right? <clears throat> Being a Christian is more than just checking the I'm here box at church. It's about knowing God personally, re relationally. Having a personal, heart-level, authentic relationship with Him is what it's all about. And living your life in obedience to Him and for His glory. Jesus even issued a very sobering uh, warning to us in Matthew chapter 7 when He said this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those, only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. I want you to know today, that God wants to know you. And our hearts should be, Lord, I want you to know me. We should have on, uh, open, honest hearts before the Lord so that we can know him for who he is. So again, you can be doing all the right things. You can be in all the right places and still not know God. That was true for Samuel. It's true for us. Number two is this. You can hear God speaking, but not recognize that it is God. <clears throat> you may not recognize God's voice when you first hear it. <clears throat> it takes time to become familiar with his voice. And you might think it's your, at first you might think it's your own conscience speaking to you, or your own, your own thoughts speaking to you. And the, and the truth is, the Holy Spirit may be speaking to you. The spirit of the living God, he may even be repeating himself graciously and patiently to you over and over, trying to get your attention, trying to grow you, trying to teach you, trying to um, help you to live out what he's called you to do in this life. Remember, it is the Holy Spirit who speaks to us. And, and it, when he speaks to us, he speaks to us. Not to condemn us, but to help us. To help us. Look at what it says in John 14. It says, the helper is the Holy Spirit. The Father will send him in my place. He will teach you everything and help you to remember everything that I've told you. It's the Holy Spirit who speaks to us. If you're in a place where you're, you're not sure if you're able to recognize the voice of God, lean upon the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, help me to recognize the voice of the Lord. 
And he will graciously and patiently and lovingly help you to recognize the voice of God in your life. Number three is this. This is really important. Sometimes a mentor, a mentor can help us to learn and to recognize and respond to God's voice. The older and more experienced Eli recognizes what is happening in this story and instructs the young Samuel on what to say if it happens again. Sometimes we just need some wise counsel. Sometimes we just need some people in our lives who have been around the spiritual block or two, who have experience hearing from God, who can pour into our lives, who can invest into our lives and say, this is the word of the Lord for you. Sometimes a mentor can be so valuable to us in recognizing and then obeying and responding to the voice of God in our lives. That's why I encourage you to come to church on a regular basis. We try our best to teach and preach the word of God as it is and not water things down. And we try our best to be very relational and available. And if you have questions and you need mentoring and you need, uh, you need to be developed and encouraged and you have questions about, am I hearing the voice of God? We want to be a church that comes alongside of you and points you to the good shepherd who is speaking to you. We want to be that kind of church to help you to hear his voice. Because I don't ever want to be a pastor where, and I would tell you this over and over again, don't depend on me to hear God for you. Now, I can confirm it. I can, I can encourage you in it. And I can say, hey, this sounds like the Lord or this doesn't sound like the Lord. But you don't need a stand-in. You don't need somebody in between you and God To help you hear God's voice. You can hear God directly. Personally. Through the person and work of the Holy Spirit. But it's important to do that in community. It's important to do that together. Because if we don't, we can be led astray. We can can start believing things that are out there and not so true. But when you're in community, when when you're underneath a, a pastor, when you're underneath a life group leader, they can help you to stay to stay discerning. And how many of you know we need to be discerning people when we hear the voice of God? <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 13 says this. Walk with the wise and you'll become what? Wise. For a for a companion of fools suffers harm. So let me just ask you point blank. Do you have somebody? Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody that you can talk to when you don't know if it's really God? Do you have somebody in your life who who you trust who will pray for you and who knows solidly? The voice of God. If you don't have somebody, get one. Pray about it. And take a risk and ask them. Say, will you be my mentor? Will you be my spiritual coach? Will you be my pastor? Will you be that person who helps me in my journey? The good news for Samuel is that he had Eli. He was able to go to Eli, and, he, and Eli was able to give him instructions on how to hear and, and how to correctly respond to the word of God. Number, number four is this. We must come before God as humble and obedient servants if we want to hear what he is saying. Everybody say humble. <laughs> Anybody like to eat humble pie? Okay. Everybody say obedient. <clears throat> All right. Anybody enjoy just being obedient? Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes in my relationship with, the God, with God, it's I come to him kicking and screaming. I will come to him and say, no, Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to say that. I don't want to go to this person. I don't want to forgive. I don't want to... 
I don't want to give. I don't want to do this. But the Lord takes me gently and graciously, and he, and he calms me, and he says, Stop, Brian. Stop kicking and screaming. And come into my arms because I love you. And i got to tell you something that you may not want to hear, but you need to hear it. Because, Brian, I, I want to know you, and I want to take you on a deeper relationship, and you need to know what I'm about to tell you. Sometimes the Lord has to calm me down. Because inside, now I'm a pretty mellow person, right? So I'm pretty laid back. But on the inside, I can start getting frantic. And I can start having uh, chaos going on on the inside. And nobody else would know it looking at, looking at me. But if you were to see the heart, if you were to see what's really going on on the inside, you'd be like, wow, pastor's got issues. <clears throat> and I do. And we all do. Let's just get used to it, right? But there are times when the Lord just has to say, Brian, calm down. And the Holy Spirit speaks peace. And I come to him with, in a submissive attitude. And I say, okay, Lord, I'm done with my own thing. I'm done trying to figure this out myself. I'm done trying to do this in my own power. I'm just coming to you as a, as a submitted servant. And I want to be humble. And I want to be obedient. And if you're humble and obedient, your chances of hearing God's voice go up exponentially. Amen. Obedience to God and his word shows true humility in a person. Obedience shows we love God more than anything else. Humility is obedience to God. Humility is not is not uh, just thinking badly of yourself or thinking less of yourself. No, humility is obedience to God and His Word. Disobedience is manifested in pride, right? Pride is disobedience to God's Word. <clears throat> How many of you need to be more humble? Okay. <clears throat> I don't need to raise my hand because I'm already more humble than you are, okay? That's a, that's a joke. <clears throat> don't send me an email on that. But be encouraged today as you come to God. I want you to be encouraged today. As we come to God in humility and we come to God in a spirit of obedience, saying, Lord, you speak to me and whatever you tell me, I'm good with it. I'm going to do it. We can rest assured, and this is Psalm 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Number, number four is this. And this is the fun one. You, you ready? All right, your seatbelt's on. Okay, here we go. If we, we must learn to obey God, even if we don't understand why. And even if we don't know the final result, we learn from Samuel that a willingness to obey is an important part of hearing God's voice. We saw that in the scripture where, where, where Samuel says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Yeah. Listen, a, servant's, a servant hears with the intention of obeying. Right? A servant hears with the intention of obeying whatever his master tells him. It is insulting to ask God what we should do if we have no intention of actually doing it. <clears throat> so part of a willing and submissive spirit is that we obey God even when we don't understand why. We obey God even when we can't see the final result or we can't see the outcome. We obey God no matter what. And regardless of who we are, right? We're all children of God. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Just because I'm a pastor doesn't mean that I don't have to obey. No, I have to obey even more. 
<clears throat> just because you're a young person doesn't mean that you have to obey. No, just because you've been walking with the Lord for years and years doesn't mean you don't have to obey. Whoever you are, what circum- whatever circumstance that, you, that you're going through, whatever stage of life that you're in, obedience is required to walk with God. <clears throat> now, if you don't act on what God is prompting you to do, you probably are not going to hear him speak a lot of new things to you. Does that make sense? So the more that you act, the more that you follow, the more you will hear. Every time we obey a prompting, we're growing increasingly stronger in our walk with God. Every time we obey a prompting of the Holy Spirit, it takes us to a new level. It takes us higher. It takes us deeper in our relationship with Him. Don't expect God to be speaking new things to you if you haven't obeyed the last thing that he told you. You love me, don't you? Okay, I love you too. It's amazing how much more clearly we will hear God after we get in the habit of obeying. I just want to tell you this. This is coming to my mind. Somebody may need to hear this this morning. But delayed obedience is still disobedience. When God calls us to do something and he says something to us, it means to do it now, right? Do it immediately. Do it right away. I'm telling my kids to do this all the time, right? Hey, dad says do this now, okay? There's a reason why dad says do this now. But somebody here may need to know that this morning because God may have been prompting you over and over and over again. And he's not going to tell you something new until you obey the thing that he's already told you. So obey quickly. Amen? Obey swiftly. Somebody said maturity can be measured in the time it takes between what we hear God say and then how we act it out. If you want to be spiritually mature, make sure that that gap time is little. God speaks. Okay, I discern it's really God's voice. I'm taking action. Okay, not God speaks. And I'm going to find every excuse in the world not to do it, not to, not to say it, not to do it, not to go there, not to give this, not to pray this. No, I'm, I'm not going to procrastinate the promptings of the Holy Spirit anymore. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, the Apostle Paul says this. So we keep on praying for you. Asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. May he give you the power to accomplish all the good things that your faith prompts you to do. I want you to hear that this morning. That God not only tells us to do things, prompts us, instructs us to do things. But he also gives us the power to do them. You cannot live the Christian life apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives us the power to accomplish all the things that he prompts in our hearts. So if he says, go and do this, he's going to give you the power to go and do that. If he says, go and say this, he's going to give you the power, the ability, the enablement to go and to say that. If he, if he says to you, go and give this or, or, do, or do this exploit, well, God is going to empower you. He always empowers you to accomplish what he speaks for you to do. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the point of promptings is obedience, okay? Can I just tell you what you need to hear and not always what you want to hear? Okay, the point of promptings is obedience. 
to take action, to obey. And when God is prompting you, when he's prompting me, we need to do it. We need to be careful to do it. And this pleases the Lord. And this is, and and when we do that, when we take action, we might just be the answer to somebody else's prayers. Would you allow God to use you to be the answer to somebody else's prayers? So when you feel God prompting you to say it, say it. When you feel God prompting you to give, then give. When you feel God prompting you to go, then go. When you feel God prompting you to do it, then do it. <clears throat> now, let me go ahead and invite the worship team up as we get ready to close. I want to close this whole series with this one final thought. And if I could share any, anything, it would be this right here. The absolute key to hearing God's voice. Think about this. It is the relationship with God, not the voice that we are to seek. Okay? I want you to understand that. Okay? It is a relationship with God, not the supposed novelty of hearing God's voice that we are to seek. First and foremost, our passion should be to know God. To know God personally, to know God Himself. Not just to experience the hearing of His voice. No, the hearing of His voice is it's not a gimmick, it's not a spiritual token to attain so that you can brag about it to your Christian buddies. Hearing God's voice is part of having a relationship with Him. That's why we say, and this is in your bulletin, every single week. Our our weekend services, our Sunday morning services are designed to help you and I know God. God wants a personal relationship with us. More than just practicing religion, he wants to know us intimately. He wants us to know him intimately. And our Sunday services are all about that, where we just want to help people to take their next step in knowing God. Paul the Apostle said it like this in Philippians chapter 3. He said, I want to know Christ. There's a lot of other things he could want to know. There's a lot of other things that he could he could have experienced and pursued in his life, but he said, as an apostle, I want to know Christ. Is that your desire? Is that your passion as well? He said, I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So what's he saying? He's saying the biggest reward, the biggest prize, the ultimate thing above every other thing is not hearing God's voice. It is knowing God. And as you pursue him, as you press on in your relationship with him, you better believe you will hear his voice. And you will hear him speaking clearly to you, maybe like never before. But here's the, here's the point. Hearing God, write this in the notes, hearing God flows out of an intimate, loved-based relationship with him. If I could close with anything, this is it right here. If we're sitting down having coffee about hearing the voice of God, this is what I want to leave you with right here. That hearing his voice flows out of an intimate, love-based relationship with him. That's what he wants. That's his heart. 
He wants us to be people in relationship with Him. And because and out of that relationship, we hear Him. We hear the voice of our shepherd. And we will follow. We will take action because now we know that the promptings of the Holy Spirit, the point of them is obedience. Taking those action steps. Doing what he says to do. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me, please?